There are arguably fewer animals more majestic than the fox. The subject of fascination and folklore the world over, foxes are often depicted as wise, crafty animals who outfox their adversaries using cunning and charm. Not only is the fox one of the most visually varied animals on the planet, their combined distribution is vast, stretching to the corners of six of the world's seven continents. Our first species, the common fox, has a deceptively boring name. More often referred to as the red fox, its iconic orange pelage is accented by a bright white underside, particularly on the chest, lower portions of the face and the tip of the tail, and darker areas on the bottom of the legs, the backs of the ears, and to a varying degree throughout the rest of the coat. As iconic as this coloration is, it is the variations in pelage that make the red fox one of the most impressive species, with several spectacular color morphs, including the melanistic silver fox and the partially melanistic cross fox, which features a mixture of orange and black hair. At 31 pounds, the red fox is the largest of all 22 species and also has the largest natural distribution of any non-human land mammal, being found throughout the majority of the Northern Hemisphere and has also been introduced to Australia. Thanks to this enormous distribution, the red fox is the most taxonomically diverse species with over 40 subspecies. Though much of their range is found in temperate zones where they occupy a wide range of habitats, including forests, grasslands and mountainous terrain, in addition to urban and agricultural areas, there are some subspecies of red fox found in vastly different habitats. At the southern end of their natural range, several subspecies occupy the arid areas of the Middle East, including the Transcaucasian montane fox found in northeastern Turkey, and the Arabian red fox, which has larger ears to dissipate heat. At the northern end of their range, there are several subspecies accustomed to snow, including the Edo red fox found in Hokkaido, and others whose ranges overlap with that of the next canid on our list. With a circumpolar distribution, the Arctic fox has a much more simple ecology, most often found in Arctic and Alpine tundra, where it preys on small mammals such as lemmings and voles, in addition to a wide variety of other small animals, eggs and berries. In the summer, they will store surplus food in a compartment in their dens, which are dug into the tundra or at the base of cliffs and house their family unit. Arctic foxes form monogamous mating pairs, with the female fox known as the vixen giving birth once or twice during the spring and summer season. Litters usually contain five to eight pups, also known as kits or cubs, after a gestation period of 46 to 58 days. At 11 and a half pounds, the Arctic fox is much smaller, but is another species with considerable variation in pelage. This variability, however, occurs seasonally as their icy winter environment melts away towards the warmer summer months. During the winter, their coat is bright white, providing the perfect camouflage in the snowy terrain. In spring, they begin to shed this coat, which turns to a greyish brown and again aids in camouflage against the thawed tundra and rocks. The Arctic fox has small ears, in addition to a smaller snout and shorter legs, all of which prevent heat loss. For us Europeans, red and arctic foxes are the only species found on our continent. North America, however, is home to several spectacular species, two of which are categorized in a different genus to those considered true foxes. Although the grey fox doesn't sport a wide variety of fur colors, it does boast an unusual tendency to climb trees, a useful skill not commonly utilized by other canids. This ability is made possible by semi-retractable claws, which allows the fox to retract them while walking around, keeping them sharp like those of a cat, and then extend them for grip as they quickly scramble up a tree to avoid predators like the much larger coyote. In terms of size, the gray fox is halfway between arctic and red foxes, usually weighing no more than 15 pounds, but can weigh up to 20. Dens are usually prepared by the female before breeding season, the exact dates of which depend on location, but occurs in the winter months. April is the most common month for births, with litters averaging four pups who have dark brown pelage, 
which changes to adult coloration with age. The grey fox is found throughout much of North America and also stretches into northern South America. To the west of this range, off the coast of California, sit the Channel Islands, the six largest of which each play host to an endemic subspecies of island fox. This species is visually very similar to the grey fox, but at no more than four and a half pounds, it is around a third of the weight. Although these lovable creatures are no larger than a house cat, they are still the largest carnivores of the Channel Islands and prey mostly on invertebrates and depending on which island they inhabit will also eat fruit and prey on small rodents. The island fox is one of only four species whose conservation status is not listed as least concern. Heading back to the mainland, the swift fox is one of only two remaining species on the North American continent, found across the prairies of the US and Canada. Like their island cousins, the swift fox is also quite small, weighing no more than six and a half pounds, and their curious faces bear a striking resemblance to the Corsic fox, who occupy the same habitat on the Asian continent. These animals are generally thought of as socially monogamous. However, a 2005 study published in Science Direct, which analyzed almost 200 individuals over a four year period, highlighted multiple breeding strategies used by the swift fox. Although 93% of family groups consisted of a male and female pair, roughly half of the offspring were sired by a male who was not the mate of the female. The remaining 7% of family groups were led by trios of either two males and one female, or one male and two females. This strategy is not uncommon in the world of foxes, with a single offspring sometimes staying behind to help care for the next litter. Found to the southwest in both the United States and Mexico, the kit fox is the last species to explore in North America and is another ecological specialist, sticking to semi-arid and arid terrain either side of the border. It is characterized by its large ears, which help regulate body temperature, and for which it is often compared to the fennec fox, which also has large ears but is almost twice as small. Aside from the nominate subspecies, the San Joaquin kit fox is the only known subspecies and is currently listed as endangered due to habitat loss and predation from larger canids such as the coyote. All of the species discussed so far are found in the northern hemisphere, and while the dense tropical forest of the Amazon is not suitable habitat for foxes, the grasslands and mountainous areas that surround this famous region are home to more species of fox than exist on the North American continent. The Andean fox, or Colpeo, is South America's answer to the common or red fox. At roughly 30 pounds, they are essentially the same size, but are most often cited as the second largest species of fox. As such, their only known predator is the puma, referred to in North America as the cougar or mountain lion which have an enormous range and can weigh a staggering 265 pounds. These foxes prey upon rabbits, rodents, birds and other small animals, as well as eating carrion and as omnivores will also eat fruit. Andean foxes can be found at elevations of almost 15,000 feet and like the mountains themselves, their range stretches along the western side of the continent. At each end of this range sit two fox species that are unfortunately difficult to find photos for. The Sechoran fox is a small species named after the Sechoran Desert and inhabits arid environments in Ecuador and Peru. To the south, Darwin's fox is the smallest species of the South American foxes. It is found only on the west coast of Chile and shares part of its range with South America's version of the grey fox. The Patagonian fox, also known as the South American grey fox, is a small, hardy species found in the beautiful Patagonian region between Argentina and Chile. These foxes, like many, are thought of as solitary, but come together to form monogamous pairs during breeding season. In the Southern Hemisphere, this runs from August to September and sees pups born in the spring starting in October. The gestation period is roughly the same for most foxes at around two months, and litter size is usually between two to six pups. This species is one of the smaller foxes of South America, weighing no more than nine pounds, and mostly hunt European rabbits, 
which are thought to have been introduced to Chile in the mid-18th century. The pampas fox is also found in Argentina and is distinguished by a dark muzzle and a brown-grey pelage streaked with lighter and darker regions and a black tip at the end of the tail. This species inhabits and is named after the temperate grasslands that stretch between southern Brazil and eastern Argentina, but can also be found as far north as Bolivia. Although these animals are larger than the Patagonian fox, weighing up to 14 pounds, they are thought to be preyed upon by large birds of prey, such as eagles, as well as larger carnivores. There are two more species left to explore in South America, but only one that is contained in the same genus as those previously discussed. The hoary fox is the sixth member of the Lycalopex genus, which is grey in colour with a white underside. They mate between July and October and give birth to an average of two to three offspring. Our last South American species is the crab-eating fox, which is named so for its tendency to hunt crabs during the wet season, although their diet is thought of as omnivorous and is not composed primarily of these animals. Their coat is grey-brown, with areas of red around the head and legs, which is more prominent in some individuals than it is in others, and all individuals have black areas around the feet. At up to 18 pounds, they are the second largest fox in South America. The crab-eating fox is found both north and south of the Amazon in subtropical forest, grassland and woodland. In order to continue our journey, we need to travel across the Atlantic to the tip of the African continent to visit another species in its own monotypic genus. Aside from its taxonomic status, the bat-eared fox is one of the most unique animals on this list for a variety of reasons. While many foxes are solitary, this species is thought of as social. Although their family groups are small, consisting of a mated pair and their offspring, they are not territorial and their home ranges frequently overlap with those of other family groups. At 60 to 70 days, they also exhibit the longest gestation period of any fox, although their litter size is normal at between two to six pups. Its large ears can measure over five inches long, which amongst other uses help it locate insects, its primary prey, with termites and beetles making up to 80% of its diet. Interestingly, it is because of this dietary specialization that bat-eared foxes have more teeth than any other fox, possessing between 46 to 50 compared to the usual 42. This species is also referred to by several other names, including the big-eared fox and the cape fox, which is not to be confused with our next species of the same name. The cape fox is the second largest African species, weighing no more than six pounds, and it is characterized by its large ears and silver-gray fur, with reddish areas around the head and limbs, and darker areas on the muzzle and the tip of the tail. The average lifespan of the Cape Fox is 10 years in the wild, which is indicative of both African and Asian foxes, who tend to live much longer than those in North America, whose life expectancy is usually between three to six years. Offspring are born from October to November and are initially cared for by both the male and the female. Independence is reached by five months and Cape Foxes reach sexual maturity by nine months of age. This species lives mostly in semi-arid and arid areas and are named so for their range, which covers South Africa's Cape province and can also be found as far north as southern Angola. On the opposite side of the continent lives another desert specialist whose range covers almost all of the Saharan desert. The fennec fox is one of the most famous fox species, widely known for its disproportionately large ears and tiny size, weighing no more than 3.3 pounds, making them the smallest canids on Earth. Like many foxes, fennecs are nocturnal, spending their days escaping the sweltering heat in their underground burrows and emerging at night to hunt. Their large ears, which can measure up to six inches long, are dual purpose. They dissipate heat, allowing them to control their body temperature in the desert environment and also serve as a listening device allowing them to detect the movement of their prey underneath the sand. As omnivores, fennec foxes eat a variety of small animals, including rodents, birds, reptiles and invertebrates, as well as fruit, leaves and roots, which provide this species with 100% of their hydration. 
Another area where Fennecs are quite unique is their social behaviour. They can be found in abnormally large groups of up to 10, which usually consist of a monogamous mating pair, their litter, and several foxes who stay from the previous litter. In addition to the fennec, there are two other species who call North Africa their home. The pale fox is found in the transitional zone to the south of the Sahara. At no more than 8 pounds, they are medium in size and visually very similar to the other North African species, Rupel's fox. This species occupies a very similar range to the fennec, but extends throughout the Middle East as far as Pakistan. They are roughly the same size as the pale fox, and in addition to their large ears, the soles of their feet are covered with pads of fur, helping to protect their foot pads on the hot sand. The home range of Rupel's fox can be almost 70 square kilometers and is marked with urine, most often by males. Moving to Asia, the steppe is home to many incredible animals, including the Saiga antelope and Shavalsky's horse, but none are more majestic than the next species, the Corsic fox. These canids are found both on the steppe and in the arid areas that border this vast expanse of temperate grassland. Like the Arctic fox, their summer and winter coats are quite different in appearance, sporting a thicker, lighter coat in the winter months, which molts down to a darker, thinner coat for summer. One of the smaller species weighing six pounds, Corsics are described as nomadic, adjusting their home range to counter the colder seasons on the steppe, which makes hunting more difficult. They are described as mostly carnivorous, with small rodents making up a large portion of their diet. Although this footage is of a red fox, Corsics and many other foxes use this leaping technique to secure their unsuspecting prey. The fox will use its keen sensory toolkit to locate and stalk prey before leaping into the air, landing directly on top of its chosen victim before securing the kill with its bite. There are three species that remain on our list, the first of which is confined to the Tibetan Plateau. The face of the Tibetan fox is not too dissimilar to that of the Corsuk, but this species exhibits especially thick fur to stave off the cold temperatures at higher elevations of over 17,000 feet. Not only is the Tibetan fox monogamous, but they form lifelong partnerships with their mates and are not especially territorial, often sharing their hunting grounds with other pairs. Heading east, Blanford's fox is found throughout the Middle East, and although they are generally found in mountainous terrain, they are another species who sport large ears to dissipate heat. To visit our final species, we need to head to the Indian subcontinent to view a fox found as far west as Pakistan and as far east as Bangladesh. The Indian or Bengal fox is similar in appearance to the Cape fox but is larger, weighing up to 9 pounds. They mostly occupy non-forested areas such as grassland and arid areas such as desert. Before the breeding season commences in the Northern Hemisphere's winter months, dens are either re-excavated or dug afresh. Offspring, which number between two to six per litter, will stay with their family group for four to five months before leaving to establish their own territory and find a mate. The northern side of their range overlaps with a particularly beautiful subspecies of red fox, which is not too dissimilar in appearance and is named the white-footed fox, in addition to another species of canid named the dole, which you can learn about in this video along with all 15 species of wild dog. Thank you so much for watching.